At this moment, since we have the geometry of the room, we can now try to relight the entire footage using Nuke's 3D lights and the new shadow system. Keeping always in mind that we do not have that we have not devoted any extra time in making a more perfect geometry of the room as we should. Of course, the better the geometry is, the better the quality of the relighting and the shadows will be. So, for us to do an entire relighting of the room, we are going to start by projecting the entire room to our geometry. To do so, we need to start by copying the entire room and the 3D setup we've made in the beginning of the scene when we did the modeling. So let's just go ahead and let's pick up the entire modeling section that we've created. Let's copy it and let's paste it down on the bottom of our comp. So let's do like so. Now, we still need to, I'm going to put this to full screen, we still need to pipe in the camera into the camera stream like we did before. The only difference now is that I'm just going to move this like so and I'm going to move the camera stream to this side so it behaves more in terms to the tidy script that we have. Okay, and I'm going to rename this Relighting Projection. Now, what we do need to keep in mind is what we want to do is that we want to project the entire room into the geometry. So we need to use a Project 3D node and an Apply Material node to project the footage we've comped so far into geometry of the new. We then use the same camera from the Project 3D to actually project the texture into the geometry. So let's start by bringing in a Project 3D. The Project 3D lives in the 3D menu and it's part of the shading of the shader menu. So here it is, Project 3D. We click Project 3D. Now the Project 3D has two inputs. One input is the camera, the other input is the footage. So first off, we're going to plug in the footage input into the last merge that we had. This means we are projecting everything that we've done so far into the room. Now the camera needs to come from the same camera that we used so far. So I'm going to plug in the camera input into the stream of the camera. The stream of the camera is this parallel stream that we've been having next to the main comp stream. We then need to make sure that this project is now plugged in into the entire set of geometry. To do so, we need to take away the checkerboard texture that we had, and we basically need to project, click the project texture into the textures uh, that we have so far. I'm going to delete one of these dots. We don't need so many of them. We only need one. So this is the copy of the entire room. I'm going to plug it into the project and now what we should have, of course the last scanline render also should have the camera piped in. So this is the still the same camera we had before. And now if I bring the viewer into the scanline render and if I actually look at the 3D mode, you can see that now I have a full projection set up on top of the geometry that we have. Now, one thing that you're probably noticing is that for some strange reason we are getting some kind of transparency issue in the projection. This is because of two things. First of all, our projection needs to be projecting to the front only. That's the first thing we need to make sure that our projection is doing. Because we don't, don't need to project to both sides or we don't want to project to the back of the geometry. We want to project to the front. So make sure you do that. Also, we do not want to crop because we are going to apply lens distortion, so we do not want to crop the image. But we also have a small problem. If you look at what's incoming from the, the footage, you can see that we have an alpha channel on it. The alpha channel is actually the alpha channel from all the geometry that we've been putting in. 
this is not going to help our projection because the project 3D node will want to look at the alpha channel correctly. So to fix this, we need to bring in a shuffle node and that shuffle node needs to make sure that we shuffle some white into the alpha. So instead of having the alpha as it is right now, I want to bring the alpha to a full white solid. Now, if I now switch into that 3D perspective, you can now see that the perspective is now fully solid. So it is actually working. So if I look through the camera's eye, what I get is a perfect representation of the room projected to the geometry. You should, of course, be aware that if I play it, it does not display in real time. Don't be alarmed by this problem. This is just because the OpenGL preview in Nuke does not allow you to have footage in the previewer. That is the only reason. If I do stop my player and if I move frame by frame, you can see that the frames do update. So the, old, the entire uh, uh, footage is being projected. It's just that, unfortunately, Nuke's OpenGL system cannot play it in real time. So now that we have a full setup of projection, the only thing left for us to do is to actually put a light into the scene. Now, we could bring in any kind of light we want, but in this case, I want to bring in a light that is basically a spotlight. So, if we go back into our scene, and if we go into the 3D system, I'm going to go into lights, and I'm going to select the spot out of the options. Now, immediately the entire scene becomes black, that's fine, we still haven't done anything, so you can plug in now the spotlight uh, into the scene that we have. Once you plug it into the scene, and if we look at the 3D system, you can see that the problem that we have so far is that the light is actually underneath all the geometry. That's why we have everything black. We want to make sure that our spotlight is actually moved up. So I'm going to move it up and I'm going to rotate it so it faces my geo. So as you can see now we have a spotlight. Now the spotlight uh, function will relight the scene and since we are doing a projection it will pretty much work. It won't work for complex scenes but it will work most of the way. Now in the spotlight I'm going to keep my color intensity as it is but I am going to change my intensity to 20 because I do want a little more power in my spotlight. I am also going to keep my cone, cone angle as 40 but I am going to uh, change the penumbra angle to something like 8 and I'm going to make the fall off a little bigger so we have a bigger fall off so as you can see the fall off basically just makes a smoother uh, intensity around the, the cone of, uh, of light. So I'm gonna bring it to 90 and I think I'm happy with this. Now one thing is that if I look through the camera's eye and if I bring my viewer into 2D you see that this is already looking pretty good. We already have a pretty good relighting of the 3D system. But since my whole purpose with this uh, section was to actually pretend that there's almost like a flashlight facing the scene and not just one spotlight, I am going to attach the translation of the spotlight into the animation of the camera. This way, I am pretending that the actual spotlight is attached to the camera, almost like you know these teams of SWAT teams uh, that come into a room and they have a spotlight attached to the gun it would be pretty much the same thing so to do so I just need to basically just co go all the way up here to my camera I open up my camera values and I go down and I open up my spotlight and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag the information of translation from this side to that so I'm gonna just click and drag the XYZ of the light. I am also going to click and drag the uh, rotation. Now, since I only clicked and dragged, the only the value is coming. I want the animation to come. I actually want to make a link. 
So just bear with me. I'm going to just basically, I'm going to leave the rotation as it is, not animated, but the translation I'm going to move. So I'm going to use the command or control button while I drag to actually make an expression link between the two things. So now, as you can see, we have an expression link between the spotlight and the camera. You can see the green expression link. Now, at this stage, you can see that we have the same values. The only problem we have now is that since we have now the spotlight exactly in the same position as the camera, the spotlight is kind of a little boring because it does not really move a lot with the image. So I still want to give it a little extra movement. And since I can't do that anymore because my translation X, Y, and Z is already fixed by expression, what I could do is I could plug in into the spotlight an extra controller to just move uh, my light around. So I can do that by using an axis. So I'm going to just basically bring in an axis from the tab menu and I'm going to plug in the axis into my spotlight. This way this will behave as a secondary animation. So if I swap to 3D I'm going to explain to you exactly what's happening. So we have the spotlight. The spotlight is pretty much living in the same place as the camera as you can see. So it is actually in top of the camera right now. So it's almost pretending that the spotlight is right in the camera just like a uh, spotlight of a camera would be. Now the axis on the other hand since it's a secondary animation because it's connected to the input of the scan line will behave as it will allow you to do a secondary animation to the light which means it will allow you to move the light around but still retain the camera animation. So it will move with the camera, but the axis will allow you to, to basically offset the spotlight. So as you can see now, it's still moving with the camera, but it's offset by the axis. Now, since I want a little more easy way to control this axis, I want to make sure my pivot point of the axis is actually in the same pivot point as the spotlight. To do so, it's very simple. You can just go ahead and change the pivot point of the axis to have the same value as the translate of the, of the spotlight. You can do that by hitting the command or control button and clicking and dragging into the pivot point. Now the pivot point is the same as the place where we had the spotlight. So now, I can actually move the spotlight as I want, but still retaining the primary animation of my camera. I hope this wasn't too confusing, but it is very simple. I have a, a primary animation that is coming from the expression of the camera. That primary animation is basically on the translate XY through an expression linking to the camera. I then have a secondary animation of the spotlight with an axis. That axis is connected to the spotlight. That axis also has an expression link making sure the pivot point is the same as the position of the spotlight. 